Hey guys, this is Stephanie with Empower Physical Therapy. And today for our business spotlight, we are going to interview Natalie. And uh, she is the owner of Well Grounded Coffee and you guys are going to love her story. Um, and if you haven't stopped by to get her coffee, you should. It's like my favorite, it's my favorite coffee. Um, so definitely if you are in the East Dallas area, you've got to look her up to, to find her. So um, welcome. Thanks, glad to be <laughs> because, here. Yeah, tell us a little bit about your story backgrounds on you and how you got started with this. Mm -hmm. uh, my background undergraduate is psychology and um, my graduate degree is adult education and curriculum. And in my pathway and research, um, I came upon, you know, I had this thought, is it possible to walk alongside another human being and um, walk them toward um, their highest potential or a higher potential? And in thinking about that question, I, uh, Michael and I, my husband, found a place in San Francisco called the Delancey Street Foundation. They've been at this for, I think, almost 50 years, five decades. Wow. And um, they have a residential program that's focused on work and education and their average resident has seven felons. And their success rate is higher than 90% um, as far as non-recidivism um, or um, back to any kind of um, alcohol or drug rehab. Um, and so we went and visited and uh, talked to the residents, learned from them uh, a couple times actually. Um, just to see what they were doing and to learn from them. And then we came back here and we actually talked to and learned from some people who are doing something similar, uh, like Bonton Farms, which is, yeah. which is awesome. amazing. They amazing. Us, yeah. They let us sit in on some of their leadership meetings to learn from them. And um, since then we've met people from uh, Dr. Portia from Cafe Momentum. And um, we just love the idea of giving second chances um, to a population that has so many doors slammed shut. Yeah. Um, you know, they serve their time. They get out thinking that they're free to start a new life, but it's really, really a difficult pathway for them. So um, we were able to take a baby step of not being a residential program, but I found Exodus Ministries, which is a residential program. And that kind of moved us forward to simply open um, our first business, which is well-grounded coffee community <laughs> and employ and use um, Exodus as our first hiring partner. And so we have since opening, grand opening after Christmas of 2020, um, so less than a year ago, we've hired five baristas from Exodus and they're on a strategic um, path. Uh, we have seven uh, critical skill sets at the coffee house because our goal is that they not just become baristas, but actually their mind opens to be entrepreneurial and learn yes. all the different aspects of the business. And then also we have an educational process where they're all choosing some sort of career path. Um, Dallas College has partnered with us and started them on some basic computer classes and um, recently a hospitality class. So they're also just learning, um, starting to take college classes, which is really fun. That's awesome. Well, I know, you know, people may not know what Exodus is and um, tell us a little bit about them and their organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Exodus, and I believe they've been around over 30 years. They're a residential program for uh, formerly incarcerated moms. And the moms literally leave prison, go straight there to Exodus, which is right here in Dallas. And they are reunited with their children, given an apartment and taught parenting skills, budgeting skills, and then sent out to get jobs. And the jobs they were able to get were very much just fast food, minimum wage, um, short shifts, and not the kind of jobs that would help them to create um, the kind of future, you know, that we want for, for them to have. So really like a, um, it's not a living wage. It doesn't allow them to move out of the scarier areas as far as when they're ready to find their own housing. And so, um, we're, and no one's really pouring into them. I mean, you go to those positions, it's like, you just show up, you do your thing, you go, you go away versus really, um, a company that's, that's willing to make them better in all aspects of their life. Yeah, we hope so. We have four pillars, work, education, community, and faith. And our customers really do come in and form a community, just extra resources around them. We've had 
so much generosity as far as um, the dentists right in front of you, um, giving mm -hmm. the girls some um, dental care and just a hairstylist on the same strip as us, giving yeah. them some uh, services and just people have been so generous so that it's not just the community that we built, um, you know, on our staff. Yeah, uh, it's really this community, people like you just really just reaching around them, get, just learning to know them. You know, one of yeah. the things um, our barista Angela has said at, at some of our events is that people come in and treat her better than she's used to being treated. Yeah. With respect and kindness. And that's a big deal. That's awesome. Well, and you know, when, when I look on, you know, healthcare and one of the big pillars of health is community. I mean, it's, it's a part of what's been lost with um, COVID, I think, mm -hmm. um, because you can't get together with communities. And so how can you create that? And then, you know, now you're bringing people who aren't used to having a community or having support behind them and bringing them into communities where they know what a community really is like. And, um, and that's huge for them. It really is, um, Stephanie, because, you know, for example, when I'm, things happen, we're all going to go into crises or, or have trouble spots, right? And when I have a trouble spot, it's a single crisis, but without, because I have community and resources yes. to reach out to. When these ladies were having crises, they were double crises because they had no resources, no one to reach out to. The people who they might reach out to were in their own crises and, and yes. at a place where they could help them. So. Um, it is a really important pillar. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us a little bit about your mission, your mission with a, with a company. I mean, I have an idea um, of just creating this and even like maybe your vision for the future. Mm -hmm. So the, we are a nonprofit, a 501c3, and the name of it is actually the Dignity Project. And so uh, Well Grounded is our DBA, Doing Business As, our first of what we hope is m our, many Um and so we're not exactly sure how the growth will occur. We have some ideas and we've actually already had uh, been offered, um, do, would you like to duplicate what you're doing in this place? So I do think there will be some duplication of exactly what we're doing with coffee. Um, I mean, we honestly, um, we have really good coffee. Um, I say that humbly. You do. <laughs> I mean, we have a good mission, but you can't just um, have a good mission and, and, you know, not so great coffee. And um, I say that humbly because we partner with a local roaster right here in Dallas, Bull City Rooster. And so that's exciting. And so duplication is very possible because we have a great cause and we have really good coffee. And um, that's exciting. But also as we walk along organically with the ladies with their career paths, we can open up businesses that would help them in their career path. So, for mm -hmm. example... Angela used to be a, um, a licensed massage therapist. And so she would very much like to be relicensed and we could help her open up her own business, especially because we're learning business principles here and not just coffee. So yeah. we'll, we will duplicate, um, God willing, um, <laughs> as well as we'll walk alongside their paths if they have things that they want our support and help with creating business plans and following that through. So yeah, that what? And, and I mean, I know when I created this business, I, I didn't even know that I would even be where I'm at at this point. Sometimes you're just doing it and going and, and then it's like, oh, I have this idea. And, and then you start formulating a plan around it. And then it starts going into action and which creates other opportunities and things that are out there. So it's just kind of what happens. Yeah. I mean, our highest goal is always to hire the next barista and to yeah. continue giving promotions to get them to a living wage and beyond so that they're. Um, their futures really generationally are changed. Yeah, which like that's going to that's going to change families in the future. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I mean, ultimately, the, the goal of anyone, I mean, even the goal when people like work in my office is just making sure that they're they're just better. Even if they leave my office, they're going to leave better than when, when they came in. Yeah. And the more that you can do that, that, that that's how you start making change. Yes. Mm -hmm. Doing life together, walking Good. side by side. And that's exactly. what we're doing here every day, whether we're making coffee side by side or whether we're sitting down talking about something that looks a little more like case management or <laughs> <laughs> we do a we do a matching car bonus. Uh, so we raise support because they have a nice savings. That's one thing that Exodus does really well is help them 
put money aside. And so we do a matching car bonus. And so they're always dreaming, dreaming about cars and looking oh, that's at awesome. <laughs> so But that's you funny. know, they don't, they don't get a chance to dream. Or because if they do try to dream, then literally it's not like it will never happen. So why should I even do anything like that? No one's going to be able to help me or support me or, you know, or, or each teach me how to even do it. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, just, that's really awesome. I love that. Yeah. And that, and that is something we talk about is, um, you know, they've spent most of their lives in survival mode. And how do we move out of that survival mode toward a, a mode that's thrive, you know, where you do get creative and have ideas. And that's really fun to watch because when we hire them, they are still very much just in survival mode, not dreaming. We're like, you know what, well, what would you like to do when you grow up, <laughs> you know, or, um, and I mean, they honestly have no idea because no one's ever really, they've just, they just do what they need to do to get by. And so that's yeah. a beautiful journey to walk with them. Yeah. Um, alongside of that is um, victim mentality and helping them yep. move out of that toward victory and, and positive thinking, not life happens to me, but I happen <laughs> to life. Yep. You know, yep. and, and so those are conversations we have. We have very similar conversations in my office because we talk about, you know, you have one end of the spectrum, which is the victim end of the spectrum, and you have one end of the spectrum, which is growth. Yes. And we want to move people more to growth. And, and what growth means is you're learning from every experience that you have, whether it's good or it's bad. It's an experience that you can learn from to make you better. And if mm -hmm. you start looking at life that way, then just your eyes will open up to other things versus blaming. And, yes. oh, that's just what happens. And, oh, poor me. And um, mm -hmm. that they don't know. Like, that's, I mean, no one's ever been able to help them, you know, see things differently. I mean, that's. That's, I mean, that's life. That's as you grow, it's, it's literally changing your mindset around things. I don't know how many times where I thought this is the way it has to be. And, and then I'm like, I know I just need to change the way I look at it. And then yeah. it just opens up the doors. It really does. And um, not just obviously right now we're doing a lot of the mentoring, but also we're entering into a new season where they'll be mentoring the next kind of generation of baristas. And we hired somebody new and um, one of the baristas was came to me to have a conversation about um, that person doesn't seem to like to do dishes or seem to like to do some of the stuff, you know, that needs to be done that maybe is not a favorite thing. And can I tell her? And um, I said, no, but let's talk about how you could tell her because it's easy for me to tell any of them, go yeah. do this or whatever, because they know I'll do the same stuff. I don't ask anything from them that I wouldn't do, but right. how might you as her peer, um, walk her along that because um, not all of us had the advantage of growing up with a work ethic. And so mm -hmm. part of what we do, it's, it's a learned process. We can teach that to someone who arrives without a strong work ethic or um, even customer, customer care, how mm -hmm. to talk to people. Not all of us just naturally have witnessed healthy customer care or how we talk to somebody. And so those are all processes. So it's easy to get frustrated with someone who doesn't seem like they're pulling their weight. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's, let's, how could you say that to her? And let's talk about that. And that's a conversation. So, um, yeah, I mean, a lot of, a lot of that kind of conversation, which is just, let's move from a mentality of unhealth to health. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, maybe in your old system, you had jobs where you told the boss this and the boss took care of it, but that's, we're more of a family. Um, uh, what's the word I'm trying to, uh, model we're more mm -hmm. of a family model than that hierarchy and so let's talk to each other let's you also walk alongside her toward growth and a strong work ethic it can yeah. Be like <laughs> yeah well and just remembering where you came like where you were like mm -hmm. sometimes we forget of how far we've come and it's like oh my god I was like that um, mm -hmm. I didn't even realize it because they've come so far and just realizing that but then also just nice seeing the journey like they can actually see the journey in themselves yeah, for sure. For sure. It's really cool. So how can we, how can people support you? The easiest thing is to come in and order some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fantastic. I know I've said that three times. <laughs> yeah. um, and so right now in our very first year, um, having opened in a pandemic, um, I'm really excited that we are about 90% as far as um, here's our break even. Our coffee sales 
reach about 90% of what are, you know, what we're paying out each month to run this place and the donations fill in that 10% gap. That's a really big deal. Yeah. <laughs> this in our business in the middle of a pandemic. So yeah, drinking coffee is definitely um, what's gotten us this far. And then that 10% is the generosity of people in donations. And that's easy to do from our Facebook or our website as well, grounded.coffee. Um, we are grateful. Uh, you know, it's the 10% is the lower amount, but we're here because of that 10%. Yeah. So, um, Staying afloat. It grateful. all makes a difference. Yeah. And then just spread the word. Um, yeah. East Dallas is so uh, relational. I'm great. Yes. Love it. That's so uh, support local, loyal, and yeah. uh, just word Small of community, mouth. small community in a big town. That's what it feels like here. Yeah. Shout out to EDN, East Dallas <laughs> working. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they schedule their meetings here, and that's a big deal, too. So, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for coming on today. I'm so glad to like just get this story out um, to people and because it's an important one and it's a great one. And, uh, you know, community, it, like I said, is such a big part of, of health and um, we have such a great community here and it's awesome to, to hear, you know, what other small businesses are doing. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having me. I'm really grateful. Yeah. Awesome.